In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about styling our fonts. Um, I've already just talked about embedding Google Fonts in a prior video, so if you haven't watched that, please do. And we've always already gone over uh, color in a prior video, so if you haven't watched that, please do as well. Everything is available on the course calendar or on the uh, tutorials page. Now you will see in my style sheet, where I am right now, that I've already included the font family for the H1 and the font family for the paragraph tag. And I have updated my personal sample portfolio a little bit just to make it a little bit more aesthetically uh, pleasing uh, to, to look at. Uh, I took out those background colors, which were very distracting. Okay. And we're going to focus on my H1 and my paragraph right here today. Okay. And you can see that they have two separate fonts. This is the railway, and this is the uh, Petrona. And those have been styled and coded into my HTML uh, file as well. Okay, this is the railway and the Petrona. Now, the first thing I want to discuss is this idea of font family and why we have a family and not just one font. The reason is, is that this gives the browser some choice in case one of the fonts is not working. So, for example, in this case, we have Railway and then we have Sans Serif. And what this line means is it says, please display the railway font. But if it's not working or you can't display it, display any sans serif font that you want. Now you could add another font in here and some people will, for example, Arial, which is a very common font, which at least gives you some choice in what it is that's being displayed. And I don't understand why that is black. Right there, maybe you have to put it in quotation marks. Yeah, that's in quotation. So we can display Arial. And so if Railway for some reason is not working from Google, it will display Arial for you. And then Sans Serif. You could put Helvetica in here if you wanted. Any any other font. We call it a family because these should be associated in some way. You want to have, for example, all sans serif fonts together. You don't want to mix them up. That wouldn't look right. But at least if your main font isn't working, it will give you, um, you'll, have, you'll give it a choice to, for which font you want next. And then if that's not working or they don't have it on their computer, it will display a general sans serif. The next thing I'd like to discuss is text align. Uh, text align basically aligns our text. Uh, and we can use a variety of different options. And for my header, I want this to be in the center. So I'll choose center and I'll pop that right in there like that. I'm going to make a variety of changes uh, before we go and upload it every single time to so the video isn't as long, okay? So text align just does that. You can align it left, right, or center. I'm gonna align mine in the center just for now. Now I'm gonna come down to my uh, paragraph, and I have font size. And you'll see I have a font size of 4EM up here. And we are going to be using EMs in our coding. One EM equals 16 pixels or points. And we need to know that. The reason why we use EMs is that they're more exacting and they're more flexible. They're a bit of a pain because you have to do some math with them, but they wind up being very, very useful. So the default for all browsers is that one EM equals 16 px. This is the default. And type for all browsers. Okay. So here, when I styled my H1 for EM, what 
that really equals, and I have to get my calculator out on my phone, is 4 times 16 equals 64. Okay. And so what we want to do, we always want to put math with our EM so we know exactly what we're doing and what we were thinking at the time. And I would do 64 divided by 16. And that is my math for this. Now here, very quickly, this is how you comment out in CSS. Okay. We saw that in HTML, it looks something like this, right? In CSS, it looks like this, the slash and the star and the star and the slash. And we put where we can put little notes for ourselves. And we're going to do this whenever we're doing some sort of uh, math with our fonts and maybe perhaps some other widths and stuff like that. Now, uh, for my paragraph, I am going to see what I think 1EM looks like, 16 pixels. And I'm going to put my math in there. Oops. So 16 divided by 16 equals 1, which is why I have 1EM. Okay. And let's see what this looks like. I'll do a quick update and we'll give it a we'll give it a look. And I got my main.css and update that. I haven't done, done really anything to my portfolio. I don't have to change that at all. Open up my browser. And we can see that this is now in the center. This has not changed at all because the default was 16, uh, 1 EM as it is. So if I want this to be bigger, and I probably do want this to be bigger, let me just make sure I'm in the correct resolution. I am. I will go back and I will change this. Let's say I want this to be 2 EM, just to make it easy. That's 32 divided by 16. Save it, upload it, check it out, and we can see that this is much bigger now. And actually, I like a big font on a page. I like to be able to read what I'm seeing on a website. Some people like a smaller one, but I like to be able to read what I'm, what I'm looking at. And I can read this now, so that's that's fine. But if I can, if I wanted it to be smaller, which I could do, let's say I wanted this to be 1.5 em. Okay, I would do the math and say 16 times 1.5 equals 24. So I would put my math in here. And the reason we do this is because often we are thinking in terms of pixels. We're used to working in pixels. And so you might think, okay, I want 24 pixels. So what is that in EM? And that will help you understand what pixel size uh, you were thinking about. I'll go upload it. Notice every time I change it, I have to upload it. Go back to my browser, refresh. Hmm. I, I could live with this, but still I like it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to change it back to two. And I'll make that. And a lot of web design is this. It's making little changes, uploading, refreshing, going back, refreshing. Now I like this. It is, however, a, the, I feel like the letters are a little bit too close together. And so there is a nice style that we have here called letter spacing. And just from experience, I know that like point five, let's give that a try. Point five EM letter spacing. We'll see how that affects the way, oops, opened up a new software application by accident. Uh, we'll see how that affects uh, the page. Just give it a little try. For letter spacing, you want a very small, uh, small amount. Well, so that is very big. You can see what just 0.5 EM will do in terms of how wide your letters are. Okay. So we'll go back. And usually we do like a 0 
two, something like that. Just a little taste to see, to give us a little taste, to give us a little clarity as we're looking online. And I'll refresh it. And that's a little bit better. I might make it a little bit wide. I'm going to keep it like that. I think I like that. Let's just go back and see what it looked like when it was, um, we had that empty. Just to go back and, and check. Just to verify. Get a Bob Ross all of a sudden. Happy little fonts. See, that little change made it a little bit more readable. And that's what we want. We want happy little fonts, like Bob Ross would paint happy little clouds. Yeah, I'm going a little insane today, it seems. Uh, where am I? Okay, 0.02 EM. And you know, EMs are so exacting, exacting that I could do 0.026 EM, and it would give us a little bit even more there. Say they don't really want it to be 0.03 EM, I can make it that. That would pop it wide enough, and there it gives it to us. Now also we want to do a line height. Line heights give us a little bit of space between the two lines. And when reading online, we want to have that, that readability, make that really nice. So I'm going to give myself a line height of, let's say, 1.5 EM, just to give it a go. Each font is a little different because each font has its own line heights that are associated with it. So we sort of practice with a low number, and we can go from, we can go from there. You notice I'm not uploading at all my HTML file. I'm just doing this in the CSS because my HTML is completely set. Mm, that's really nice. I like that. Um, so I've made a small adjustment to my my line height. I want this to be uh, I want this to, want to be 1.2. Brings things a little bit closer together. Here it is. And that looks really nice. It's, it's readable. Uh, we're going to get to focusing on uh, the widths, and so it's not everything's not spread out across the, the screen, and, and so on. Okay. Now, in the assignment, I, I've asked you that, told you that you could grab from certain pages from Ducket. That would be the font weight, font style, which is for the italics. Upper text transform, text decoration, uh, and you can experiment with those. So if I want to do font weight, and I would just do bold. Okay, you could also choose from this uh, the numbers that they've got going on here, um, bold bolder. And there's a range of weights that you can choose. So let's say if I just want a little bit bolder, I'll choose 300. Save it. And did it make it a little bolder? It might have. Um, if I don't like the way that looks, I'll just make it bold. That's bold. I don't particularly like it bold, but like I said, play around. Each font will look different. Each Your taste is different than my taste, obviously. And you're going to want to choose one that you think is representative of what you're, you're going to be doing. Now, this is all just play. When we get to, after we do our design personas uh, and we're in integrating things together, uh, you're going to want to have a more deliberate thing. I'm just playing around right here. Uh, I might add some letter spacing to my header. Uh, probably a little bit more than that. Let's say 0.1 EM. Headers you can get away with a little bit more letter spacing sometimes. And that gives it a little bit more prominence on the page, and so on. Now, when you're doing your fonts, and you're coding your fonts, I'm sorry, you would do font family, font size, letter spacing, and line, and perhaps line height, not always, for each of the fonts, uh, each of the selectors that control some sort of font or text on your page. So H1, 
H2, you can do this all this stuff in here for H2. You could do it for your H3. And as you get to your lists, you can do that for that as well. Uh, so the key here is remember to do your math when you are coding in your font sizes. Uh, experiment with your letter spacings. This is very important for readability as well as with your line heights. And as you're playing around, just have fun with it. This is where you can start seeing what works, what you like, what you don't like, and that kind of thing. And as always, if you have questions, let me know. Have a great day.